Ancient Egypt is, hands down, one of the most mysterious and fascinating civilizations in history. Their culture still resonates with our imagination and wonder. Their empire shaped the world as it is today in more ways than one. And yet, we still don't have the whole picture. We discover new things all the time. From two mummies that changed our understanding of the history of tattoos to the first ever mummy of an expecting mother, here are the 20 strangest things recently discovered in Egypt. Number 20. Archaeologists unearth colossal pair of sphinxes in Egypt during restoration of landmark temple. Several fragments of a colossal pair of magnificent limestone sphinxes were unearthed at the temple of Amenhotep III located in western Luxor. It all took place during the restoration of the funerary temple and the colossi of Memnon, which are two enormous sculptures in his likeness. By accident, they stumbled upon two statues half submerged in water. They soon realized they were two sphinxes. How big are they? Approximately 26 feet tall. They're believed to represent the ancient ruler wearing a mongoose-shaped headpiece, a royal beard, and a very wide necklace. But that wasn't all they discovered at the site. They also found not one, nor two, but three whole statues of the goddess Sekhmet, who was a lion-like guardian of the sun god Ra. They also unearthed the remnants of a rather large, pillared hall. In it, there are several images depicting a royal jubilee, also known as Heb Sed, which was an ancient Egyptian festivity in which people renewed and recognized the pharaoh's right to rule. This festival was usually held in the thirstiest year of the king's reign. Ironically, most pharaohs didn't make it that far. But Amenhotep did, and not only did he live long enough to see his own Heb Sed, but the celebrations of his jubilee were the most lavish and extravagant in ancient Egypt's history. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now, it's time for the star topic. Are you ready to learn about the new discovery in Egypt that scares scientists? This creepy and enormous wielded claw was discovered inside a tomb located in the famous Valley of the Kings. The tomb's markings suggest the occupant was a scientist of some sort, but this is where it gets confusing. The hieroglyphs say that the person buried there was praised, but also a pariah. Inside, they found the mummy of a man and his claw. After performing several tests, scientists determined it actually comes from a dinosaur that lived in northern Africa millions of years ago. Could the man buried there have known about the dinosaurs? And seeing as the claw still has flesh and skin on it, could it be that this man figured out a way of bringing them back? Maybe that's why he became an outcast, because the dinosaurs he brought back could have wreaked havoc amongst the ancient Egyptians. Comment down below with the hashtag StarTopic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 19. 3,600 year old pits full of giant hands discovered in Egypt. This incredible discovery took place in the ancient city of Avaris in Egypt, more specifically in a palace within the city. A team of archaeologists unearthed the skeletons of 16 human hands buried in four pits. That's right, only the hands were found. Two of the pits, located right in front of what is thought to be a throne room, held one hand each. There were two more pits, probably built at a later time than the first two, and located outside the palace, which contained the remaining 14 hands. A puzzling fact about this bizarre discovery is that all the hands were right ones. There was no left hand. Another strange factoid about the hands is their size. They're all quite large. The bizarre hands are believed to date back about 3,600 years. At that time, the Hyksos, a people originally from northern Canaan, controlled this part of Egypt. 
They even made the city of Avarice their capital city, which is known today as Tel El Daba. If the dating of the Hans is correct, they would have been buried at a time when the palace was home to one of the Hyksos greatest rulers, King Kayan. The Hans are the first physical evidence of a practice attested to in ancient texts, in which a soldier would present the severed hand of an enemy in exchange for gold. It also worked as a symbolic purpose of taking away the enemy's strength. Number 18. Ancient Ship and Burial Ground Discovered in Underwater City in Egypt Recently, a group of archaeologists have found a 2,200-year-old shipwreck at the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea. According to experts, the ancient ship sank after it was hit by falling blocks from the Temple of Amun, which was crumbling down due to a massive earthquake that occurred at the time. The shipwreck, along with the remains of a funerary area, were found where the ancient city of Heraclean once stood. They also found several objects from the ancient city in the Bay of Abu Kir, 40 kilometers from Alexandria. Heraclean, Thonis in ancient Egyptian, was one of the main ports of the country located at the Nile Delta until Alexander the Great founded the city of Alexandria in 331 BCE. The city, discovered in 2001, was submerged after a series of earthquakes and high tides hit the area. The flat-bottomed vessel, basically a galley with wide oars, masts, and sails, was 25 meters long and was used for navigation in the Nile Delta. The city had been submerged for a long time, seven kilometers from the current Egyptian coast, under eight meters of water. It was forgotten for centuries. Some people looked for it, seeing as it was mentioned in several texts and books, but the ones that did set out to look for it were deemed crazy. Number 17. At least 13 2,500-year-old coffins discovered in Saqqara burial well. Khalid al-Anani, the head of the Egyptian Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities, has announced the discovery of a 2,500-year-old burial site containing at least 13 ancient burials. The wooden caskets were found stacked on top of each other in an enclosed well approximately 11 meters deep within the Saqqara archaeological site. What's really special about this discovery is not only the way the coffins were staked, but the fact that the original colors have been found intact. That paint survived thousands of years. Imagine that. The colors are still very vivid, like if they were painted only a few years ago. A few days after the first opening of the burial site, a further 14 more sarcophagi were also unearthed. The discovery is now said to be the largest of its kind. Preliminary studies have been made on the coffins that indicate that they haven't been opened since the day they were buried. Saqqara is a vast necropolis in the Memphis region. It knew an uninterrupted interrupted occupation throughout the history of ancient Egypt. As a result, royal tombs and more modest burials rub shoulders there and present many testimonies of the daily life of ancient Egypt. From the first dynasties, kings and members of the aristocracy had their mastaba built there. The oldest tomb, numbered 3357, dates back to the reign of Hor Aha, the second ruler of the first dynasty. Number 16 robot inside the Great Pyramid reveals a secret door in a shaft. The Great Pyramid of Giza is not only the largest and oldest of the three pyramids, but it's also a source of great mystery and wonder. To this day, we're not quite sure why it was built or for what purpose. In fact, we don't know much about it at all. For instance, we think it may have been constructed 4,500 years ago, but we're not 100% sure. In hopes to enlighten some of these questions, a group of scientists has decided to send in a robot to investigate an area of the Great Pyramid that has not been accessed before. Inside a room known as the Queen's Chamber, behind a false wall, is a narrow shaft that climbs at a 40-degree angle up into the pyramid. Now, for years, archaeologists have been dying to know about what could possibly be up there, but they couldn't reach it without damaging the shaft. In 2010, a professor of robotics at Leeds decided to get involved. His little wheeled robot, armed with a camera, was able to successfully navigate the narrow shafts. The robot revealed a small, hidden chamber 
with intricate red-colored markings on the walls. It also discovered a second blocking stone that it couldn't get past. Now, what lies beyond that second stone, we will maybe never know. Number 15. Egypt's Archaeology 3,400-year pathway restored near Luxor Egyptian authorities have recently unveiled a 3,400-year-old renovated promenade called the Avenue of the Sphinxes in Luxor. It's the latest government project undertaken to highlight the country's archaeological treasures and to attract tourism with it. This ancient walkway, also known as the Way of the Rams or the Path of the Gods, connects the magnificent and famous Karnak and Luxor temples in what was, at the time, Egypt's capital city called Thebes. According to experts, this impressive walkway was the path taken by pilgrims to visit the temples and pay tribute to their gods. Its different names come from the many sphinxes and rams on pedestals that line the entire avenue. Luxor sits on the banks of the Nile River and is located about 650 kilometers south of the current capital, Cairo. Luxor has been under excavation for over half a century now, and seeing as it stretches for several kilometers, it'll likely remain under excavation for many more years to come. It's not like they have to excavate an entire city or anything. According to a top Egyptian archaeology official, the oldest ruins along the Avenue of the Sphinxes are six structures built by Queen Hatshepsut that date to 1400 BC. Here, they celebrated an ancient autumn holiday marked by parades and dancers in celebration of the bounty brought by the Nile's annual flooding of the fields. Number 14. Archaeologists may have found the lost tomb of Queen Cleopatra. In the ancient city of Taposiris Magna in Egypt, archaeologists have discovered an incredible tunnel whose engineering has impressed experts. With a height of six and a half feet, the passage was dug over a distance of 4,281 miles. They were looking for a treasure and found another. Since 2004, a team of archaeologists has been exploring every corner of Egypt in search of the tomb of Cleopatra VII. For some time, their excavations have focused on the ancient ruins of the city of Taposiris Magna, northwest of Cairo. Their research led them to an architectural feat, a tunnel which they described as a geometrical miracle. Under one of the temples of the ancient city, Kathleen Martinez of the University of Santa Domingo in the Dominican Republic and her teammates discovered the structure 42.6 feet deep. For now, the purpose of the Taposiris Magna Tunnel remains unknown. On the other hand, it could be a serious lead to find Cleopatra's sarcophagus, according to Kathleen Martinez and her team. Their excavations have given clues that seem to point in this direction. For some years, several experts have believed the former Queen of Egypt, the last of the Ptolemies, rests in the city of Taposiris Magna, founded around 280 BC by Ptolemy II. The temple, currently in the hands of archaeologists, was dedicated, according to them, to the god Osiris and the goddess Isis, whom Cleopatra worshipped. Number 13. Mysterious underwater opening discovered at Jebel el Silsila in Egypt. A group of archaeologists were absolutely baffled after investigating down a 20-foot deep pit completely full of water and subsequently discovering a mysterious underwater opening that led to what they are saying is the most important and largest archaeological discovery in over a century. The historical event took place in Jebel el Silsila, also known as the Chain of Mountains, which is located 40 miles north of the town of Aswan in Upper Egypt. Egyptian authorities confirmed that they had uncovered a trove of 30 ancient wooden coffins in Luxor, with several intact mummies still inside. An impressive fact, seeing as those coffins have spent a long time underwater. During the 18th dynasty, this area was known as a major quarry site on both sides of the Nile, and many of the workers are thought to have been buried there. These people built Egypt into one of the greatest civilizations in human history, and this is their eternal resting place, and some of them are the ones that have just been discovered underwater despite having been buried in a desert. The ancient Egyptians went through a lot of trouble to plan and build this funerary chamber so that it would be inaccessible to looters. Number 12. 
The Mystery Behind the Two Baby Mummies in King Tut's Tomb When Tutankhamun's tomb was discovered in 1922, they found the mummies of two babies that, until now, researchers didn't know who they were or why they were there. Apparently, the babies may have been twins, despite their great difference in size. Genetic analysis of the infants has shown that both babies were stillborn, one at 25 weeks of gestation and the other at 37 weeks. Since they were most likely born to the great royal wife, Hunky Sinamon, who was the young king's half-sister, it shouldn't come as a surprise that these babies had a lot of medical issues. In fact, King Tut himself had many severe health issues, as his parents were also siblings. He had a cleft palate, a club foot, and a genetic bone disease. At the time of his reign, the royal line was considered a manifestation of God on Earth, meaning they could do pretty much whatever they wanted, and marrying their sister was one of those things. But that liberty didn't come without consequences. It was found through DNA tests that the babies were both female and they also had several severe deformities. The little girl's mummies were probably buried with their father as a form of insurance to make sure he could pass all the tests and attain eternal life. Number 11. Copper Sheikh El Bilad this sycamore wood statue of High Priest Copper was discovered by Mariette at Saqqara in Copper's Mastaba, or tomb, in January 1860. This statue dates from the Old Empire from the reign of Usurkaf of the 5th Dynasty, dating from the 3rd millennium BC. Upon discovering this sculpture, the Egyptian workers of Mariette found that it resembled the chief of their village, and for this reason gave it the nickname Sheikh El Bilad, meaning assistant to the mayor, hence its name. The the priest's features reflect great dignity. The eyes are quartz with copper eyelids. The liveliness of the eyes, chiseled in rock crystals, contrasts with the heaviness of the body. Compared to statues of the Old Kingdom, this figure has an unusual pose. The weight of the body rests partly on the left leg and partly on the cane which he holds in his left hand. The left leg moves forward as he prepares to move his back leg. His head is rounded and fearless. The arms were produced separately and attached to the body with tenons. The loincloth is long and tied on the stomach. The body is slightly corpulent. The cane is modern. This sculpture is one of the most magnificent non-royal statues of the Old Kingdom. Contemplating it, the spectator remains dazzled. It concretizes the definition of eternity of ancient Egypt. It seems so real that one has the impression of being before a living priest. Number 10. Senate, the Ancient Egyptian Game of Death As it seems, the ancient Egyptians were very big on board games. They had many of them and spent hours sitting and playing with their acquaintances. But there's one game that stands out from the rest. In their flair for rituals and their obsession with death, they were able to transform the simplest game into a key component to cross the threshold into the afterlife, a kind of initiation path that turns the passage to the underworld into an entertaining game. They called it Senate. Senate was the most popular game of all. However, the name already gives us a first clue. Senate means to pass or to be guided by. The game is quite simple. It consists of having to go through its 30 squares, avoiding any setbacks or difficulties that may arise. It was during the New Kingdom, roughly around 1400 BC, that Senate acquired that ritual and initiatory meaning that characterized it for the rest of its history. Throughout this period, this board game became more of a mortuary artifact than anything else, acquiring the symbolism of the path that the deceased had to take on the way to the afterlife. Creepy, huh? Would you be brave enough to play it? Number 9. Egypt uncovers 2,500-year-old coffins and bronze statues in ancient necropolis. Another find in Saqqara. This time around, the discovery included 159 bronze statues, all of ancient Egyptian deities like Isis and Osiris, and several 2,500-year-old wooden coffins. This ancient burial site, located about 19 miles south of Cairo, has not stopped surprising us just yet. According to Mustafa el-Waziri, the head of Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities, 
This is the largest bronze cache found so far in the Bubastin Cemetery, named after the ancient goddess Bastet. Bastet was often depicted as a cat-headed woman. She was the Egyptian goddess of the home, domesticity, the warmth of the sun, motherhood, women's secrets, cats, and also the protective goddess of pregnant women and children. They also found a statue of Imhotep, and they hope to find his tomb soon, too. She was the daughter of the sun god Ra, and is associated with the concept of the Eye of Ra, the all-seeing eye, and the distant goddess, a female deity who leaves Ra and returns to bring transformation. Her name was originally Beast, which became Ubaste, then Bast, then Bastet. The meaning of this name is not known, or at least not universally agreed upon. Number 8. Queen Nefertiti's Mummy Discovered Nefertiti, her bewitching name, still resonates today. The royal wife of Pharaoh Akhenaten and the mother of King Tut is, alongside Cleopatra, one of the most famous queens of ancient Egypt. Many theories have been made about the location of her tomb and her mummy, but none has yet been confirmed. Or has it? The famous Egyptologist Zahi Hawass announced that he has found the mummy of Nefertiti. According to him, the queen's mummy was actually discovered in 1817. That year, an explorer and Egyptologist, Giovanni Battista Belzoni, discovered a tomb called KV-21 in the Valley of the Kings. He discovers two mummies but cannot identify them. They are still unknown today. But Zahi Hawass is confident. Thanks to modern technologies, he thinks he will soon be able to reveal the identity of the two mummies namely Nefertiti and her daughter Anki Sonoman. In a nearby tomb, KV-35, the mummy of a 10-year-old boy was also found. If this child is the brother of Tutankhamun and the son of Akhenaten, the problem posed by Nefertiti will be solved. Her name has gone down in history and still captivates today. Famous for her natural beauty and her painted bust dating from the 14th century, the great queen of Egypt was a very influential woman. Alongside her royal husband, Akhenaten, she wielded considerable power over Egypt. Number 7. 30 Mummies, Including a Mother Holding Her Infant in 2,000-Year-Old Egyptian Tomb a major discovery made in the southeast of the country has been announced by the Ministry of Antiquities in Egypt. They unearthed 30 mummies, all dated as being at least 2,000 years old. The mummies include infants, children, and adults, and they were all found in an intricate network of underground burial chambers. They also found a room full of items associated with ancient funerary practices. This new find is expected to teach us a lot about the ancient Egyptian empire during a crucial period of historical change. Among the most intriguing preserved bodies is that of a mummified mother and child. The pair were extracted still covered in painted cartonnage, which is a type of mummy covering formed by chunks of linen or papyrus glued together. They also found a well-preserved statuette of a Ba bird, which represents the soul of a deceased person and was believed to fly out of the tomb to join the afterlife. The site is located in Aswan, which was once a major frontier post on the Nubian border. It was called Swanet back then. In this location, there are several dozen burial sites, all from very different historical periods. In the past four years alone, archaeologists have mapped about 300 tombs. They've only excavated 25 so far, so stay tuned for more information to come. Number 6. Egypt Sarcophagus – Mystery Black Tomb Opened in Alexandria in July 2018, archaeologists found in Alexandria a massive black granite sarcophagus that had been untouched for 2,000 years. Now, if we know anything about mysterious coffins in Egypt, they should put it right back or horrible things will befall upon them. Jokes aside, they did open the black sarcophagus. They didn't find an ancient curse, but the skeletons of three people and reddish sewage water, which apparently gave off a horrific stench. In fact, at first, they opened the lid of the coffin by just five centimeters. 
but as the pungent odor came out, everyone present had to leave the inspection site entirely. Imagine that. The three buried individuals are believed to be soldiers, as one of the skulls has marks indicating an arrow wound. It could also be a family burial, but it's difficult to say, seeing as the mummies weren't in the best conditions and only the bones remain. Later that day, Waziri stated jokingly, We opened it and, thank God, the world has not fallen into darkness. Number 5. Ancient Egyptian Tombs Were Crammed Full of Snacks Ancient Egyptians believed death was an extension of life, and therefore had many of the same demands. That's why the tombs of the royal members, like Pharaoh Tutankhamun's, were packed with preserved foods like meat, poultry, and dates that had the seeds removed for the young king's pleasure. They packed enough snacks so that their ruler would have a very good time in the afterlife. Enough for a mega party. King Tut lived from around 1342 to 1325 BC, and when they found his tomb in 1922, they extracted exactly 5,398 items from it, including thrones, archery bows, trumpets, a lotus chalice, copious amounts of food, wine and beer, sandals, and fresh linen underwear. They also found a camping bed that folds up so he could take it out on one of his escapades into the desert. Basically, the ancient Egyptians were obsessed with life. They knew that death was inevitable, so they wanted to have a better afterlife. Their tombs were careful preparations for eternity, and you always gotta have a snack. Number 4. Shabti Dolls of Ancient Egypt We've all seen them. Shabtis are generally mummiform figurines of about 5 to 30 centimeters in length found in several ancient Egyptian tombs. They are usually made of blue or green glazed faience, but some made of stone, wood, clay, metal, and glass have also been found. The meaning of the name Shabti is not agreed upon. One possible translation is answerer. At the beginning, they represent their owners. The ancient Egyptians believed that without a functioning body, one could not survive in the afterlife. This is why they mummified their deceased. But in the event of something happening to the body, the Shabtis could act as a surrogate, thus guaranteeing its master's eternal life. Because of this very intimate relationship, a person was only buried with one or two Shabti. But eventually, these figurines became more of a servant for the afterlife, and they started making them with tools to serve their master. They were believed to answer their master's call to work in the afterlife. In this period, a person could be buried with hundreds of Shabti. Number 3. Researchers discover ancient Egyptian mummy was pregnant. Discovered by a team of Polish scientists, this is the only known example of an embalmed pregnant mummy. This project started in 2015 and it set out to use cutting-edge technology to examine artifacts housed at the National Museum in Warsaw. Funnily enough, this mummy was previously thought to be that of a male priest. But instead of that, they discovered what possibly is a high-status woman in her later stages of pregnancy. She was most likely between 20 and 30 years old and she died in the first century. BC. Using the fetus's head circumference, scientists have established that it was between 26 and 30 weeks when the mother died from unknown reasons. The fetus had not been removed from the uterus. It's unclear why they didn't extract and clean it. Usually, they would have embalmed the fetus separately. Maybe spiritual beliefs about the afterlife or physical difficulty with removal played a big factor. Number 2. A Mysterious Cave on the Edge of the Great Pyramid of Egypt? Many people have noticed this strange anomaly on the outside of the Great Pyramid located on its northeastern angle. It looks like a platform or an entrance to the pyramid. Well, Egyptologist Bob Breyer thought this was worthy of investigation, so he explored it on a TV documentary called The Khufu Pyramid Revealed. He climbed the pyramid until he reached the bizarre anomaly. There, he found some sort of platform that he could stand on. The view from up there is quite breathtaking where the northern and eastern sides of the monument meet. There was also a cavity that had clearly been visited before because there were ancient graffiti on the walls, but he could no longer investigate without removing some of the stones. 
Number 1. Oldest Tattoo Found on 5,000-Year-Old Egyptian Mummies We know tattoos are a very old tradition in many places of the world, but we had no idea people 5,000 years ago were already getting inked. They found two mummies that have what are believed to be the oldest figurative tattoos in the world. The tattoos are of a wild bull and a Barbary sheep on the upper arm of a male mummy, and the others are four S-shaped motifs on the upper arm and shoulder of a female individual. She also has a motif believed to depict batons used in ritual dance. This new discovery pushed back the practice of this art in Africa by a thousand years. They probably used soot for the pigment and the designs are under the skin. Researchers think these images may have denoted status, bravery, and magical powers. These two individuals were not mummified and their graves weren't marked either, yet their bodies became perfectly preserved thanks to the heat, salinity, and aridity of the desert. As you can see, ancient Egypt is full of secrets yet to be revealed. If you could time travel to the Egyptian Empire, what period would you choose? Tell us about it. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!